going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at it with another video for you guys today. So, did you guys enjoy that Mortal Kombat video? If you didn't see it, go check it out right now. Link in the description. Anyway, so, I was requested to check out this video. This is from WatchMojo.com. All right. It's called The Ring versus The Grudge. Now, I don't know exactly what they mean, so we're going to read a little description real quick. So, it says, it's The Ring versus The Grudge. Who was ready to lose a good night's sleep? Not me. For this showdown, these two often compared, these two often compared horror franchises will be going head to head. They share so much in common that in 2016, the two franchises crossed over film, um, well, for film, Sadako versus Kayako. If I'm saying that right. So the ring versus the grudge, which is best? We'll be looking at the Japanese originals, the plots, and the scares to figure that shit out. They didn't say shit, but without further ado, come along to determine which of these supernatural horror properties reigns supreme. Which horror franchise is your favorite? Favorite. So listen, I can't say one or the other as far as like who wins because it's been a minute since I've seen both the ring uh, and the grudge. So we're gonna see in this video, okay? In about a three, two, one. <laughs> This video was made in partnership with Newbie, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. Who's ready to lose a good night's sleep? Welcome to Watch Mojo. That little head twist and thing, no, that shit was disturbing. We're pitting the ring against the grudge. For this showdown, these two often compared horror franchises oh, when going no. head to head. They share so much in common that in 2016, the two franchises crossed over for the film Sadako vs. Kayako. Without further ado, come along as we evaluate a wide range of categories to determine which of these supernatural horror properties reign supreme. Uh, 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 no. <laughs> Round one, the Japanese originals. Get the fuck away from me. Though some Western cinema goers might not know it, both 2002's The Ring and 2004's The Grudge are remakes of hit Japanese horror films. I also known, known as that. Ringu, the 1998 film Ring was released to widespread critical acclaim, becoming not only an instant classic of Japanese supernatural horror, but also a must-watch for horror enthusiasts around the world. Uh -uh. Not only does it deliver a number of now a iconic scary movie scares, three, it, it was me. further elevated by its complex themes, including preoccupations about the role of technology in modern society and its relationship with tradition and the past. The film proved so influential, it even caused Western filmmakers to reconsider their approach Damn. to the genre and helped give rise to the term oh, J horror. Shit. Hell no. The Grudge, as it's That's best known Kenshi, in the West, rush out. is an adaptation of a long running Japanese horror series called Juon. <gasps> Bucking the trend of American adaptations, however, the 2004 film The Grudge is actually a remake of the third film in the franchise, 2002's Jew on the Grudge. This theatrically released film was preceded by two direct-to-video movies, Jew on the Curse and Jew on the Curse 2. You're dead. But with these being low-budget affairs, they've both been relegated to the role of prototypes in the eyes of many fans. Oh! 2002's Jew on the Grudge is where writer-director Takashi to Shimizu really hits his stride. Technically, it was met with mixed reviews at the time of release, but its unconventional non-linear narration, terrifying ghostly little boy, and pervasive creepiness have made it a cult classic among J-horror fans. <laughs> Both of Disgusting. these films are considered a must-watch for any true fan of international horror. In the years since they were respectively released, each has gone on to have a lasting impact on the supernatural horror. Run, Kenshi! But Ring is arguably better executed. And when you take into consideration that it was released first and directly influenced the grudge, it takes the first round. Ew. Why is she so intrigued with this shit? Winner, The Ring. Round two. The plot, basic premise. Have you heard about this videotape that kills you when you watch it? What kind of tape? Well, The Ring certainly gets points for originality. Long before there were films about killer smartphone apps or haunted Skype chats, Ring combined the supernatural with technology to devastatingly terrifying effect. What's your problem? I've watched it. The plot centers around a cursed videotape that causes the death of anyone who watches it seven days after the ill-advised viewing. In the 1998 film, 
It's a reporter named Reiko Asakawa who investigates the mysterious videotape after it claims the life of her niece. In the 2002 remake, Naomi Watts plays the equivalent role of Rachel Keller, who is similarly motivated by the death of her sister's daughter. Okay, so what's the time of death? Juon or The Grudge is a series with a notably oh. convoluted timeline. But hey, isn't that the mark of any iconic horror franchise? Before it became complicated by Western reboots and alternate continuities, however, The Grudge operated around a、It's、simple but compelling、reboots. concept firmly rooted in Japanese folklore the mythological spirit of the Anryo. Vengeful spirits, Anryo return to the living world after death and are given the ability to harm the living in order to get even against those who wrong them. Expanding upon this myth, however, is the specific curse of Juon. Which moves beyond this initial purpose and instead seeks to kill、Ew. others unattached to the original offense, who then in turn become similarly cursed. This is really a close one. Both franchises come armed with a compelling premise. However cool and unique the killer videotape angle is, it feels more limiting in its applications. And a little dated, while j u o n s cycle of vengeance has a certain timelessness to it. And for that reason, The Grudge takes this round to tie it up. I can see why. Winner, The Grudge. Round three, The, the American, American Remakes. Remakes. Yeah, that shit was definitely scary for me, the rain. A big enough splash in its own domestic market to attract international attention, there's a relatively high chance that Hollywood studios will start considering a remake. 1998's Ringu was just that sort of hit, and so it became the first in a long string of American made horror、so、remakes.、Creepy. Directed by Gore Verbinski, 2002's The Ring showed great reverence for the original film, recreating a similarly dreary atmosphere and a pervasive sense of dread. Miss Keller, I'm bothered by these drawings. What was perhaps most exciting about the film's success, both with critics and at the box office, is that it served as proof that American audiences had an appetite for something other than slashers. It was a reminder that horror films could be mature, populated by nuanced characters, and still succeed. Katie knew. This is true. She told me. Katie told you she was gonna die? She said she didn't have enough time. Oh, God. We're not yeah, gonna show it. This 2004 remake is a notably pale imitation of its Japanese namesake, which had been released just two years earlier. The really disappointing thing about this outcome is that sitting in the director's chair was none other than Takashi Shimizu, the Juon creator who had directed every film in the franchise up to、oh, and including、that. this first installment aimed at Western audiences. Like The Ring, The Grudge performed very well at the box office, but critics were less kind. Oh. The A chronological narration felt less successful than in the Japanese original, and in trying to stand there and look at it, American audiences, it stripped the story of what didn't work the first time around. I can't stand this. This one isn't much of a contest. 2002's The Ring was、What's、a stronger film in its own right than The Grudge, and arguably a better adaptation as well. But he、Not、doesn't know. He doesn't know what. Samara. Winner, The Ring. Round four, the leads,、uh -oh. protagonists. That flies like get off me, woman. Something you、Ooh. needed help with? Hey, you, you gotta. For this round, we are once again going to be looking at the American remakes. Though critics had many compliments for director Gore Verbinski good, and the, the cinematography of Boan Bazelli, it was arguably lead actress school, Naomi Watts who really elevated 2002's Ring to success. Like when I was in elementary school. Not all actors can navigate a supernatural premise and still maintain a sense of gravitas, but Watts enables us to truly believe in her character, and by extension, helps give credence to the threat posed by Samara. That being said, there were other critics who felt that Watts wasn't given enough to work with, and that what she accomplished, she did despite an underdeveloped character. As previously stated, 2004's The Grudge is a film with a lot working against it. 
While the non-linear narration doesn't do the viewers any favors, Sarah Michelle Gellar's Karen Davis provides a much-needed anchor for audiences to hold on to, both in right. terms of the plot's development and emotionally speaking. Em and I were yeah, alone damn. in that room, but, but I think there was something else there with us. After making a name for herself as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, she solidified her status as a scream queen with appearances in various horror films. No weapons, no friends, no hope. Take all that away, and what's left? Me. With the grudge, Fucking despite a weak script and her being just 27 at the time, she brings a sense of maturity to the role of Karen Davis. Her performance arguably saves the film from a number of poor creative decisions. Ah. <laughs> yep, you can have them. I'm sorry. This is another incredibly mm -mm. close round. I want nothing like that. To call it a tie me. because both Naomi Watts and Sarah Michelle Gellar turn in excellent performances, especially considering the often low standards of the genre. That being said, we feel that Geller had much more of an uphill battle, and as such, she earns another win for The Grudge. Winner, The Grudge. It's head Before head. we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell yeah, to get notified yeah, yeah. about our Go latest the videos. Round. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Girl, we get it. Round five, the, the scares. scares. There are many elements that are making one. a quality horror. Ooh, I remember that one. At the that end of the day, the, the one metric by I which so all horror for films pass Girl, get out the way. is how get out scary the way. they are. Get out the damn the way. The scariest scenes yeah, from the ring you. have perhaps been somewhat neutered by countless parodies. The unnerving atmosphere created by Gore Verbinski and further aided along by composer Hans Zimmer hasn't lost any of its effect. It's okay. I felt so bad for that damn horse when I was a kid. That shit disturbed me. Ew, what the fuck? And the reality is, when you're sitting in a dark room late at night, seeing Samara climb out of the TV is still freaking terrifying. You think? I ain't never watched this shit at night though. Fuck that. They love doing that falling shit. Get your ass up. Fuck wrong with you. The shot of Ugh. Katie's face is also an incredibly effective jump scare that gets us every time. Rachel, please. I saw her face. And it's this careful balance of atmosphere and shocking moments that makes the ring so effective. Not all critics appreciated the grudge, but Simon Bates of Classic FM reportedly called oh, it the scariest no. movie he'd ever seen. Who are you? What are you doing here? Notice I'm back. <laughs> Jamie Russell of BBC, for his there. part, could be counted among those who were underwhelmed by the film as a whole. But as he put it, quote, when it works, you're likely to quiver, cower, and leap with fright. <laughs> he looked like he would have laughed. Like The Ring, The Grudge maintains bit. all the hallmarks of J-horror influence, most notable among them being a pervasive feeling of dread and an ambiance that keeps you feeling uneasy Run, from start girlfriend. to finish even when there's nothing overtly scary. Look at your ass up and go. Matthew, stop it. That ain't Matthew, honey. Both of these films can be noise. counted on she for a like scary the last time. Of us. Unfortunately for many critics and viewers alike, the major scares were too few and far between in The Grudge. And as such, the more well-balanced horror of The Ring earns it the win. And with that, the competition. See, I said it while well, I was thinking it. Winner, The Ring. Did we pick the right supernatural horror property? I think y'all sure did. All right, so y'all, let's talk about who I think um, won this round, won this battle. For me, I'm definitely going to have to go with The Ring because I remember when I saw it for the first time when I was in uh, probably fifth or sixth grade in after school, we was watching that shit in the dark. And I'm like, what the hell was we doing watching this movie? as little kids in fifth, sixth grade in this dark ass classroom. You know, I'm waiting for my mom to come pick me up from school and whatnot. And it's like, what the hell is going on here? But um, definitely for me, the ring, because it's like, just imagine, okay, either one is worse. Either one is bad if it was real. But just imagine like, you watch this video, you got some dumb ass friend that's trying to peer press you and watch some shit like, Oh, did you hear about this video? And like, if you watch it, you're gonna die in seven fucking days. 
da -da -da -da, like on some Ouija board type of shit. It's just certain things. Before I get to what I'm about to say, it's just certain things you just leave alone. So say, just imagine that you watch the video. You see this girl coming out of a whale, this dead girl coming out of a whale, coming towards the TV, then the shit cuts off. You know, that static, that scratchy sound shit come on. And then all of a sudden, you get a phone call from us and you're going to die in seven days. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, and I must say, seeing like some of these scenes that's from the actual movie, like it's way, I'd rather watch it from Scary Movie 3 because it was funnier and it was less scary. It was kind of scary for me when I was a kid, when I first saw Scary Movie 3, especially like the scene when they go downstairs. Now, mind you, Scary Movie 3 is a, a parody of um, The Ring, right? So, for the most part. And like the two blonde girls, were the Pam, Pamela Anderson and some other girl, and one of them go downstairs, the bird is chirping. All, it was just like scary. And like I said, it was supposed to be a parody, but I was a kid when um, Scary Movie 3 came out. So it was still scary. It was funny, but it was scary for a lot of parts. But I can look at Scary Movie 3 and the ones before and after and not get scared, obviously. I mean, Scary Movie 4 wasn't even scary at all, to be honest. But um, I mean, of course, because it's supposed to be a parody. But you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. But anyway. And then you go upstairs, your best friend, you turn her ass around, her head all discombobulated, her her mouth all twisted up and shit, her face done turned green like she done ate a bad rotten fruit or vegetable or something, and then her head falls the fuck off, and then you look at the damn TV, now you done fucked up. But I will say though, the grudge, don't get me wrong, the grudge, it was scary too, like it's been a while, like, I don't even remember some of them scenes, like I'd have to go back and watch the shit. But I wouldn't want that shit on me. But like, did you see how she crawled up on that man? Looking at you into your soul. Like, basically telling you you're fucking dead. Like, I wouldn't want none of that all up on me. Like, I'm like, no, yo, just just kill me and put me out of my misery. I don't want to look at your evil looking ass. Okay, look like you're going to put a curse on me for seven or ten years or something like that. I'm good, bruh. I'm good. But um, for me, I'm definitely going to go with the ring. And then, like, I'm telling you, like, when, the, when I was a kid and I saw that horse, like, go crazy... And he fell in that water. I felt so bad. And it like that scene disturbed me all at the same time. Like, why would that horse do that? Horses can't swim, but what I know, from what I know, like, why did that horse do that? And then it was a black horse. I'm like, yo, that gotta be a sign of something, right? And then like, I'm like, seriously, imagine like the dude watching that TV, and then here come the girl about the damn TV. She just crawling with her wet, soggy ass skin. And it's just like, and then, of course, they're going to do the typical uh, fall. You know, like they have in every other movie. Like, say, for instance, uh, Michael Myers or Jason going to be chasing you. And what the girl going to do, she going to fall in the grass. Or she going to fall down the, uh, the hill full of leaves and dirt and mud and grass and trees and everything. And it's just like, you killed yourself. You know what I mean? And then you just be hiding and making all these noises. The point of you hiding is to keep your mouth shut. Okay, we know you're scared. We know you're scared, but you see, <coughs> excuse me, the killer is near. And if he hear you doing all <laughs> then you want to close your mouth. For what? For what? You're fucking dead. You're fucking dead. Like, you making all this pet noises and panicking noises. Like, I'm scared, Mr. Killer, please don't kill me. He hear all that damn noise. You know what? You know what's going on now? You're fucking dead. But you know, honestly, and these aren't even, this isn't in this category here. We're talking about the ring versus the grudge. But honestly, what I think will be even real fucked, even way more fucked up than this, is a nightmare on Elm Street type of situation or a dead silent situation. Because, I mean, just imagine that. A man who was killed in a warehouse because he was out here messing around with kids and killing kids and shit. Got burned in that warehouse. His soul came back to haunt everybody that's on Elm Street or whatever. And he killed everybody that he haunts in his in his uh, in their dreams. If you fall like basically you can't go to sleep. Bitch, I need sleep. God damn it. I never forget it. When I saw Nightmare on Elm Street with a couple of friends, we had a sleepover. I wish I never would have watched it. I we so have I think we watched the shit at night too. I said, why in the fuck? Whose idea was this? And then the part, I had a dream, well, kind of a nightmare. Thank God I woke up so soon after that was when, you remember when on the first one, when Freddie was like, Dana, Dana, 
in the damn dream. I was in some room hiding or something. I don't know. It's been a while. That was a long, long, long time ago. That was in like the mid 2000s. Um, and I had a dream. He was like, Taylor, Taylor. I'm like, yo, why is he calling me? What the fuck? What did I do? So I woke up. The sun was shining. I thanked the Lord and I had a good day. But anyway, oh, we're going back to dead silence. Listen, just imagine that. You being in the family or in one of the families that killed this woman named Mary Shaw because she kidnapped the kid for not believing that um, her dog Billy was talking and that she, instead of thinking that um, she was doing the voice for Billy, right? This boy goes missing. He dead. She turned him into a puppet. All these men come up in there forcing her to scream, cut out her damn tongue. Now her soul to come to to come to haunt and reap and kill the fuck out of all those men and their families, okay? And she gonna do them like uh, they did her. So basically, if you see Mary Shaw, you better not scream because if you do, if you do, if you do, you're fucking dead. Because in case you didn't know the poem, I'm finna say it, okay? You ready? Listen. Beware the stare of Mary Shaw. She had no children, only dogs. And if you see her in your dreams, be sure you never, ever scream. Or she'll rip your tongue out at the sink. They didn't say the whole poem in the, the movie trail at the time. So, like I said, I said all that. And the last part of it is, and if you see her, remember this. The only thing that can stop her is... Dead silence. Then they got this other long ass poem. I'm not finna read all that, but um, that's the main poem in the movie, and you will hear it in the trailer. So, and like some behind the scenes, alternative scenes, you know how they do. But um, I couldn't imagine being some doing something like that, being in a situation like that. This dead ass woman who wanted to be a doll, her damn self, haunting me because I was the last of the family of the boy. Because remember, Jamie, which was like pretty much the main character of the story. Um, he so happy. Ashen, Michael Ashen, happened to be his uncle or something. And you see, Jamie's last name was Ashen, so he was the last Ash. Well, the baby was the last, and that's why he killed Mary Shaw. Killed the wife, Lisa, and the baby because Lisa was pregnant. And then, lo and behold, Jamie, after all that shit that happened to his wife, realized that his daddy. He thought his daddy was alive, but his daddy was dead. He was a damn doll himself because his stepmom was Mary Shaw and Mary Shaw's spirit and soul was inside of her. And she was using his dad as like a puppet with the little stick in the back. And she, he turned around and she was like, No, who's the dummy? And Jamie was like, I can't take it no more. I'm just gonna scream. Just put me out of my out of my misery. He was up in the dog book with the rest of them, and it was just it was just sad. But I mean, after all that, who wouldn't scream? But anyway, the more of this story is, and the more of this video, I'm gonna go with the ring. The ring takes home the title, and uh, yeah, this is a cool little video. Shout out to WatchMojo.com. And with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Okay, comment below. Um, which one out of these two, the ring or the grudge, which one do you think, uh, takes, takes home the title? Which, which one do you think was, uh, number one and which situation, you know, the backstory of the ring and the grudge, which one do you think would be worse? I already told you mine, so y'all let me know yours as well as anything I can wrap it for you guys next. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on my Instagram and hit that notification bell button so you guys can know how to be up and loaded. Thank you all for watching. I'll see y'all later. Taylor Rain, I'm out.